Hi, it's Chester Tubwell from Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at recording macros using absolute and relative references. I'm also going to show you a few keyboard shortcuts that you should know uh, whenever you're recording macros. What we've got is we've got a scenario where we've imported some data from another system that gives us a list of salespeople and their sales. What we're going to do in a third column is calculate their commission. And the macro is going to create a little formula for us and copy the formula down the number of rows that we have on a particular sheet. Now I want the macro to work whatever the number of salespeople are. So in this sheet we have eight salespeople, but in this sheet we have five, and this people we have in this sheet we have ten. So I want the macro to work however many rows we have in our table. What I'm going to do is show you how to apply formatting when the number of rows are variable, how to use the auto sum function when the number of rows are variable, and how to copy formulas when the number of rows are variable. Now this tutorial will assume that you have a basic grasp of how to record macros. So what we're going to do is I've opened up my developer tab on my ribbon and I'm going to start by recording a macro and I'm going to call this commission and I'm going to give it the shortcut key control shift C. I'm going to store the macro in this workbook. Uh, there is room here for a description but I'm just going to leave that blank. So I'm going to click on OK. So the first thing I want to do is select cell C1. Now up here there's this option called use relative references um, if you're following this tutorial and you want to do it for yourself, please make sure that Use Relative References is currently off. When it's on, you can see it has a dark background. This is in Excel 2013. You may have another version. For example, in Excel 2010, it has a kind of coloured background to it as well, but slightly different colour. So we want to make sure that's off. The reason I want it off is because I want to record actual cell addresses that I'm typing in things into. And I always want to type the commission heading in C1. So I definitely don't want this on for this part of the macro. So I'm going to write in my heading. And I'm going to write a little if statement into this cell. Basically the rule is if, is if the salesperson meets the sales target of 50, then they get 8% commission on the difference between the sales target and their sales. If you haven't used if statements before, don't really worry. This will work. This map, this whole video is about macros and copying macros, uh, uh, copying formulas. It'll work for whatever formula you create. So here we are. Anyway, I'm saying, is this value here greater than or equal to 50? Comma. If it is, I want to say this value minus 50 times 8%. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use control enter rather than an enter. Um, oh, I haven't finished off my if statement yet. A little bit too quick there on the mark. So I've got to put my value of false in. So in other words, if they don't meet their sales target, they get zero commission. So there are close the bracket. And yes, as I said, I was going to use control enter. That leaves me in the cell I'm editing. Okay, so I've got my formula in cell C2. Uh, but what I want to be able to do is to copy it down the rest of the column. The trouble is, is that, as I've said, on these other sheets, I've got different number of rows. So a normal copy by dragging the fill handle down, or even by double-clicking on the fill handle, will always copy down in the macro the same number of rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to this row and use Control down arrow key, which will take me down to the last consecutive value in that column. I can then move across here, select back up to the top here using another shortcut key, and then paste in the formula. Okay, so let's start that process. So first thing to do is to copy, Control C, I've copied the formula. I'm now going to move left one column, and then I'm going to use a shortcut key, Control down arrow key. So Control down arrow key selects down to the last consecutive value in that column. 
OK, the next step requires me to change my macro recording setting to use relative references. I want to move now one column right. However, if I was to select C9, this cell, with use relative references off, what it would do is it would record C9 as the destination cell every time the macro run. We don't want that, we just want it to move to one cell uh, one column to the right on whatever row the la this last value is in. So this is where I use relative references. When I record with relative references it uses an offset method which describes how many rows I move down or up or however many columns I move to the right or to the left. So I can do that. I can then turn it back off again and now I'm going to use Control shift up arrow key to select up uh, to um, the uh, next value in that column. And I can use Control v to paste in my values. Okay, so that's got the commission into my spreadsheet. I'm going to press Escape, and that gets rid of the marching ants that were around that cell that I copied. Now the next step is to add some totals to the bottom of my table. What I'm going to do, I'm not using relative references anymore, I'm going to select B1. I'm then going to move down to the last consecutive value in that column using control down arrow key as my shortcut key. I want the totals to always be two rows below the last value in that column. So I'm going to use relative references to record this part of the formula. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to move down two rows. I'm now going to use the sum function to add up this column of figures. Now, if I left the formula as it is there, it won't work when there are a different number of rows in my table. The trick to getting this to work for however many rows is to make the first cell address in the range an absolute cell address. So I'm using the F4 shortcut key to put in my dollars, which gives me an absolute reference. However, I actually want to be able to copy this formula across one column. Um, so I'm going to actually um, take out one of the dollar signs. Um, and I'm going to do that by just releasing the column part of the cell address uh, because the commission values that I want to add up will be in column C. So I'm going to take out that dollar. So I'm just fixing the row part of that cell address. So I'm going to press Control Enter. I've still got relative references on and I'm going to copy one column to the right. Now with those cells selected I'm going to also apply some formatting. I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to apply some uh, border formatting as well. Now I'm going to go back to my developer tab, I'm going to take off use relative references and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select cells A1 to C1. They're always going to be in the same place, whatever table I'm in. And I want to apply some formatting generally to this table. First of all, I'm going to make my headings blue background and bold. And then I'm going to use the shortcut key Control shift down arrow key which selects down to the last consecutive row of data in my table and I'm going to apply some borders. Next I'm going to click into A1 because that's where I want to end up once the macro has done its business. Okay so let's see if this works whatever type of uh, however many rows that I have in my um, uh, spreadsheet. First of all I'm going to have to stop recording. So I'm going to go to my developer tab and I can stop recording there 
or I can go down to my status bar and stop recording here. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go on to the next sheet, five salespeople. Uh, it doesn't really matter where I click here. I use Control Shift C to run my macro, and you can see it works for a lesser number of rows. Let's see if it works when there are more rows. Control Shift C, and yes, it does. The only thing I could have done is include some widening of columns or auto fitting the columns within the macro. I'm going to have to do that manually now, but if you're doing something like this, you might want to consider doing that up front. Okay, hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, it's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Thank you very much.